Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the C++ series. We are going to be continuing talking about classes and where the copy constructor is actually called. And this is something that I see new C++ programmers often struggle with. So I want to go ahead and show some code examples just so you're aware of where the copy constructor is being called and how you might prevent it from being called if you don't want to make lots of different copies. So let's go ahead and look at some code here. So if you've been following along with this series, this is the running example that we've been working with, just an example class so that we have something reasonable. It's an array. We've got a constructor, a destructor, a copy constructor, and the copy assignment operator. And today we're focusing again on this copy constructor here and the copy assignment operator, which is also of importance so that you know when one is called versus the other. Now, within this array, I'm just holding some data, some integers here in this vector data structure here or this container class. So maybe a better name for this is int array or something. But again, this is just a working example. So I'm going to go ahead and modify our constructor here on the uh, left side of the screen. And I want to up the stakes a little bit here so that we have 100,000 items that we are actually pushing back into this data structure when we first create it. So that's a relatively big uh, array of integers. Uh, relative, I guess, is if it's big or not is up to you. But that's not 10. It's, it's much larger. And well, our destructor doesn't need to do anything because we're holding all the data in the vector. So again, I'm just going to leave this empty here. We'll follow the law of big two. And well, we need to amend our copy constructor here to now copy all of the right hand size uh, data here. And again, for our copy assignment operator to do the same thing. So right hand size, uh, get the data and get the size there. And when we print out the data, uh, we'll want to do the same here. Uh, this will just be our data size and so on. So let's go ahead and compile this and just make sure that it works. So if I give it a quick compile, looks like it's working. And if I give it a run, well, let's see, it's going to print out a bunch of things and take a little bit here. OK, so now that we understand sort of the interface here, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this window just to give us a little bit more real estate so we can start talking about this copy constructor a little bit more and understand when it is being called. Uh, so let me go ahead and move up our uh, main window here. So I'll just do a split here and let's bring up the main window. Because what we have in our program right now is our one array being initialized. We set some of the data. And in fact, that's not really important for this example. So I'm going to get rid of it. Um, and maybe just actually, I'll just leave in the first element just so we can see something uh, unique here. Uh, just so we know that it's still working for our copy assignment and copy constructors. Uh, but here again, just to make clear, this object is being constructed here with a default constructor, and then we're using the copy assignment operator. So that's what's actually being called here. OK, uh, that's what's being uh, or that's what's important here. Now, just so we can see that, let me go ahead and reduce our data size down to, well, how about just one item here <laughs> so we can actually see the output here. And again, we'll see that the constructor is called for my array. The constructor is called for my array two. Then the copy assignment operator is being used here at line 13. And then, well, the first element is the same for each of these, regardless of how it was initialized. So both of these were initially, the first value was zero. I set the value of our first array to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then my array two is constructed with an initial value of zero. I copy it so it gets everything that was in my array, which is this value for the first element. So if you're good with that so far, we're ready to move on. And you can, uh, if you need some refresher, go ahead and start from the beginning of the classes lessons in this uh, video playlist here. OK, so what we're going to do here is uh, go ahead and switch this. Instead of using copy assignment, this is where the copy constructor would instead be invoked. And this was uh, originally shown to you when we first talked about what a copy constructor is. Again, any time that we are constructing an object which has the word constructor in it, so when we're first building it is when the copy constructor is called. So copy constructor 
is called here. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile it and we'll verify that we see this time one constructor when we originally create this object and then one copy constructor for when we are constructing my array two using my array or populating, if you want to think about it that way, all of the data from my array into my array two. Okay, so that is one of the common places uh, or the most common perhaps where copy constructors are called. But what folks often forget is, well, some of the things that we learned early in this series with pass by value. So for example, if I write a function here called uh, print in array, and I passed in some array type, uh, and I'm just going to you know, call this a here, and we just call a dot printing data here. Okay, so let's go ahead and, well, try out this function here. So if I do print uh, in array and I pass in my array. Then I'm going to recompile this. And well, if I run this, you'll notice that we have all the same output as before. But as soon as I call this function here, a copy is made here of this array because we are passing by value. So that means that the copy constructor has to be called for this function here. And again, this is an important reason why we need to call the actual copy constructor, uh, or, or excuse me, why we need to define our copy constructor so we can handle this situation of when we pass in an object. Okay. Now let's see how expensive this gets though. For instance, if I have a loop here where I want to do this, say a hundred times here, and uh, let's go ahead and run this here. And well, you'll see all of a sudden that I've made, well, if I scroll up here and it'll take a while, a hundred copies here as I'm scrolling here up and up and up and up and up just because I called a function that had my array here. Now you might've noticed earlier, I changed this value to just one so that we could see the output, but realistically we could have a relatively large data set here. So if I call this a million times, recompile it and rerun it, well, you're going to see some huge arrays being generated and then lots and lots of copies of those arrays. In fact, I'm a little bit nervous that this video is just going to crash with all of the printing that's going on here. But again, it wouldn't be infeasible that we would have a program that passes around large data sets like this in a function. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, quit that process so we can see what's happening there. So. Okay, you might say, well, Mike, fine, that's um, you know pretty unreasonable here. Uh, let's make it just a little bit smaller, maybe something like 10,000. Uh, I'll go ahead and run it, and you know maybe this is a little bit more reasonable here. And in fact, let's not even uh, do the printing here. Let's just get rid of it, um, and this isn't really going to do anything. Do nothing, okay? But if I still run this program, again, you'll still see there are lots and lots of copies being made here. Okay, so let's make these arrays relatively large here. And let's go ahead and in our program, let's go ahead and get rid of the printing so we don't have that annoying uh, output here. Um, or I shouldn't say annoying, uh, but if I run this, it's still taking a relatively long time to run this program. So if I time the program, time dot slash prog, and it goes on and on and on. This still took, you know, a decent amount of time here to make 100 copies of an array of, say, what, a million things in it. Okay, so how can I speed this up or avoid copies? Well, one of the things we learned earlier in this series, which I don't want you to forget, is pass by reference. So I could pass by reference here. And I'm not changing anything, so usually I pass by const here. So let's go ahead and uh, try this out here. And this time, wow, it took, you know, 0 0.027 because again, I'm not making any copy copies here of this array. I'm using the actual reference to this uh, array that has already been declared. In fact, you only see things printed out twice here, once for the array and the copy constructor. Okay, so that's just a little tip here if you're trying to avoid copies. Now, the last thing that I want to show you in this video that I think is also sometimes forgotten from folks is maybe you absolutely do not want copies of your objects. Maybe for whatever reason, it's very expensive, right? In this case where you know you're going to have 
objects that once they're constructed, you don't want to accidentally make copies. And these accidents can happen where you forget to pass something by reference in a large project, maybe you're not familiar with the code base, etc, etc. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is go ahead and leave in this pass by copy. But now what I'm going to do is open up our array uh, header file here, the interface, and I'm going to go ahead and just move our copy constructor here to private. So let's go ahead and try to compile this. And well, <laughs> as soon as I try to compile it, I'm getting a compilation error here because it's saying it's private here. I'm not allowed to call this function here, print in array, because this would invoke the copy constructor, which I've said is not available. So that's one way that we can handle this situation. And we can also handle this situation if we want to be a little bit more uh, modern here with C++, as is the series title, by just saying delete here and just getting rid of the copy constructor. Because we are just explicitly saying, hey, compiler, don't even make a copy constructor for me. And if you do, you know, just let you know that it is deleted. We definitely don't want copies. We don't want this accident to happen where we pass a very large object by value and that slows our program down. All right, so that is the idea. So again, we can just delete the copy constructor. If you're not using a modern version of C++ for some reason, let me go ahead and um, undo this. Uh, then our other strategy was to just put the copy constructor under private. And that's a technique we sometimes use for other things like constructors, for instance, if we don't want to be able to construct an object and there's different patterns uh, design patterns for why you'd want to do that. Anyway, these were just a few tricks here. And again, we want to be careful when making copies of objects passed into functions and still think about if we're passing by value or perhaps passing by reference. All right, folks, so that was a little lesson here reviewing copy constructors just so you can see when they're being called. I think it's useful again as a beginner to sometimes just print out copy constructor or copy assignment just so you can be sure which is called where. Again, I've seen this trip up enough, folks. I think it warranted a video and is a just nice reminder that as you have really large objects, really think about if you need to make a copy. All right, if you found that useful, make sure that you like and subscribe so you don't miss some other lessons where I'm going to continue talking about classes and other topics in C++. Thanks for your time, folks.